This YCN segment is brought to you by New London Hospital, an affiliate of Dartmouth-Hitchcock. And now a glimpse into the canine unit team at the Lebanon Police Department. Uh, Lebanon Police Department, we have three canines in our unit. Uh, all three dogs, uh, well two of the dogs now are patrol and drug certified. Uh, and then the patrol certification is runs the gamut of uh, tracking, um, apprehension, handler protection, people protection, um, building searches, evidence recovery, and uh, those sort of things. In the 80s, we, we had our first canine unit and that unit went through uh, until around 1990, 1989, 1990. And then uh, around 2003, 2002, we started the unit back up with Lieutenant Isham. And since from that point on, we had two dogs until recently. Uh, when Chief Mello came in, um, he saw the need for a third dog. And uh, at that point, uh, we added a third dog. For instance, Max was my prior dog. Uh, Max and I were together uh, all the time. And uh, you know, every call for service that I would go to, Max was with me. Whether or not he was deployed or not, he was always there. Um, these dogs have to learn what they have to do. They have to learn to work around others, learn to work around other officers, learn to work in chaotic situations sometimes. When I first got Max, uh, my kids were in elementary school. So, and they, they when, when Max passed, um, they were both in college. So there's a whole generation of, of Lebanon kids that would come to my house and play with my boys. And uh, they grew up around Max. We have to remember that they're still service dogs and they're trained to do certain things. And I always just tell the community, if they want to, if they want to see our dogs, and you know, we can we can get them out and let them pet them. Just so we under so that we, they ask first, so that you know there's no uh, no miscommunication with the dog and the person trying to. Try. But they're not the, the dogs themselves are not a threat to people. When when we use them in a capacity in law enforcement, whether it be um, for apprehension work or that sort of thing. Um, uh, those things are done un under the direction of the handler. The, the dog is given commands to do those things and um, the dog theoretically shouldn't bite unless we tell them to. So, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in the fact that we do a lot of training to, to maintain a high level of control over our dogs and to, um, you know, make them safe for the community. The canine unit is the most rewarding thing I've ever done just for the bond, the time, the time I get with the dog, watching that dog grow, watching, watching our teamwork grow, because it really is a team. Yeah, I mean, he gets up and goes to work with me, and then he goes home with me, and he sleeps right next to me uh, at night, and you know, he's, you know, he's just not a, a service dog, but uh, we allow these dogs, when they do go home or they're off duty, to be dogs, to play, um, to spend time like any other normal dog would spend time. So uh, dogs are a lot like athletes. You know, they, they have a, a shelf life of work, of being able to do that sort of job that like athletes can do. It's very demanding what we ask these dogs to do. The training is very demanding. The job is very demanding. And you know, over time, their, their joints, their bodies, they wear out just like people. And so, you know, it really depends on the dog. It's why we try to get dogs with good genetics um, so that you, know, you get a good longevity out of these dogs. But I would say that uh, for public relations and for um, being relatable to the community, it's, it's probably, in my opinion, our biggest asset to the police department. Uh, everyone tends to like animals. Uh, a lot of people love dogs. So um, for us to go into certain situations, I've, I've, we do a lot of public relation events around the city throughout the year. And you know there are times where I've had to deploy to get the dog out of the car because you know domestics or different things are happening. Kids are upset, and we'll get the dog out to let the kids pet the dog. And sometimes it'll just little things like that that we can do to help um, diffuse situations. Very thankful for um, the, the the community and what they've done for us. We get a lot of support from the community. Uh, the folks at West Lebanon Feed and Supply, you know we. They do a lot. We probably wouldn't have a canine unit if it wasn't for folks like them. Kurt and Sharon Jakes are amazing. Uh, they, they help us with uh, you know, the, the, the food for our dogs and just the startup of our program. So it's, it's the community people, people in the community like them are the reason why we're here. <laughs>